more Cardiff record shopping. Ahoy hi everybody, or Croiso, and welcome to my second day of Cardiff record shopping. Um, so, part one covered what I did on Wednesday the 1st and brief talk about Tuesday the 31st. Um, so, today's Thursday the 2nd as I record this, later than that when you see this, and it is my last full day in Cardiff before I head home. Uh, I'm in Cardiff just having a little break really, meeting up with my friend Craig yesterday and just taking the opportunity to revisit the city that I went to university in 27 years ago. Uh, so this morning started with a bit of reminiscing. Uh, I visited my old houses or flats um, in the case of the first two years I was here. Um, so when I was ready I sort of got up, had some breakfast and walked my old walking route to where my halls of residence were for the first two years at university, which is at um, Heist Halibont. Headed up there. I didn't actually go onto the Talibont site. Um, it's secure. I might have been able to get on there, but there's no, I couldn't see anybody on the gates, but I didn't want to be unwelcome. Um, but I took a picture from the road of the flats and could see that they haven't changed at all. Then I had a little wander down uh, just behind Talibont is the River Taff. And then it leads into Butte Park. Um, but I sort of had a little wander down, walked over the bridge by the weir to the little park where we used to play football. Um, took a couple of photos of the river because it was particularly dramatic given the weather today. Uh, Storm Kieran. It, Cardiff's not been majorly hit by it, thankfully, but. Uh, it's, you know, you could tell things weren't right, let me put it this way. But here's a couple of pictures of the river. And from there, that was well on my way to my first record shop of the day, which was the Cardiff Record Exchange. Let me check if I got that right. Yes, the Cardiff Record Exchange. Um, which is totally new to me. Uh, Craig found out about it and on Facebook and sort of tagged me in and I liked and followed the site and they do what Kieran does and what uh, Slice of Vinyl and what Even Chemistry do and regularly put up videos of what they got in, um, which is good. Uh, went in there and was very impressed. Uh, had a very successful shop. So I shall show you what I bought. It's a nicely laid out shop. Um, the only gripe, if you like, is that they've got too much stock. So some of the racks were quite tight and a bit difficult to actually browse through. But that's you know that's a nice problem for them to have. I went in and sort of had a quick glance to sort of get the lay of the land and found Out, sort of, you know. Um, so you, the door is sort of on the right hand side of the shop. I could see immediately in front of you was just sort of general A to Z, normal, you know, run of the mill rock and pop, or at least the start of that. There was somebody browsing that, so I went round to the right, which started with. I think it was S. I think it was the S's onwards. It might be the T's onwards, but it was it was around there. Uh, that went on to. Uh, what did that go on to? Stuff I didn't look at because it was stuff I wasn't interested in, but I can't remember what it was. Then there is indie. Oh, it was compilations. It was what it was. Nothing, you know, terrible. But I wasn't interested in going on to compilations. Uh, then it was indie. It's, we're now on sort of the left-hand wall of the shop. Uh, 
then it was Punk and New Wave 80s, which sort of just bled into Punk and New Wave more modern. Uh, then we had... What did we have next? It was Jazz and World soundtracks I think uh, soul funk and soul and R&B then there was um, the high value records so some loads of the walls lots of signed bits lots of some really interesting stuff um, but there was a whole three or four big you know rows columns even of more valuable records. Uh, then the desk, which had two buckets with the new new ins. Uh, then it went ra round, as I say, to the general A to Z. In the middle, we had singles all down one side with loads of boxes underneath that were really clearly labelled and I found the Prince one straight away because um, they were so clearly labelled. On the other side was... Uh, bargain records so there was a sort of a, a one pound section a two pound section a three pound section a four pound section a five pound section and underneath the general A to Z uh, which I didn't go through was uh, five pound and under records as well but I could see from what was visible that there was nothing that I was going to be interested in there um, but yeah I went through a lot of the stock and I've spent a fair bit of money. Um, I will tell you the prices on the tickets. Um, this is not what I paid. I will go through that at the end. Um, I'll start with the singles. As I say, I found a box with print. It was Prince, Elvis Presley and somebody else. I can't remember who somebody else was. Um, went to the Prince ones. Lots of bits that I didn't have. And at the back were these more, a bit more rare ones. Um, so there's a Japanese copy of Delirious from 1983. Uh, the original Japanese sleeve. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's Delirious on the A side and a little red Corvette on the B. So that was priced at £8. Uh, then a US copy of Delirious Back to Horny Toad for three pounds. So again, the original bag, and then being American, of course, jukebox cutout. Another American copy, this is When Doves Cry and Let's Go Crazy. This is a back-to-back -back hits reissue from 1987. It's priced at £6. Again, the original Warner Brothers bag. And the vinyl. really happy to have got this one uh, this is a German jukebox promo for £10 of Love Sign by Nona Gay and Symbol um, backed with Margie Cox's standing at the altar um, so this was a single from the 1800 New Funk compilation promoting MPG records um, which was meant to be promoting albums that were to be released and most of those albums never ended up being released uh, it is a bit dodgy, but vinyl looks all right. You know, the playable section. I guess that's just from the jukebox days. And then I didn't have a seven inch version of this. This is the poster calendar sleeve of Little Red Corvette. Uh, so this was priced at 16.
So yeah, I have a 12 inch version of this. Original inner. Little red corvette and horny toad on my bee. So, give you some idea. So, I'll go through pricing properly at the end. But so that they come, came to, yeah. Sixteen, twenty-six, thirty-two, forty-three. He rung those through the till for forty pounds. Okay, now I don't think these are in any particular order. Um, in the cheapy section, I found a Huey Lewis album I didn't have. So this is Huey Lewis and the News Hard at Play, which is priced at four pounds. shouldn't clean off all right and certainly nothing which should affect the play uh, Beach Boys album that I didn't have Beach Boys party priced at 10 pounds original copy going by the fold backs Inner from Capital again in a light marking, certainly on an album this age shouldn't be an issue at all. A mono copy in case you didn't spot that. I think I'm correct in saying that this is, to date, the most recent proper Joni Mitchell album, which is Shine, which came out in 2007. This is the 2019 reissue, um, priced at £18. When I say reissue, I think this was the first time on vinyl for it. Perfect. And in a polyline sleeve as well. Uh, Harry Nielsen I didn't have on vinyl. This is Nielsen Sings Newman, ten pounds. So this is him singing Randy Newman songs. I have on CD because I've got everything on CD that has been collecting it all on vinyl as well. Yeah, a bit dusty, but otherwise pretty much perfect. Uh, Slade album I didn't have for £15. This is Rogue's Gallery, and it's got the original merchandise flyer for it. Uh, 1985. Don't, oh, all join hands, I think I know. I think that was a bit of a hit. Uh, oh, somebody, very nice inner. Somebody's put it in. Which hopefully means it's in, yeah, a mm, bit of a thumbprinty type mark there. Should clean off. Bit of elbow grease. Uh, that's price at 15, I can't remember if I said that. Uh, another slide I didn't have for 18 to a death to us part from 1981. Uh, yeah, I don't know any of those. 
don't think. And again, so you put it in a polyline inside there. I'm guessing it's the same person. That is min. Oh, yeah. Right. Tiny bit of mark at the end of side two. But otherwise, mint. Uh, extreme second album, Porno Graffiti, 25 pounds. It's a 180 gram music on vinyl reissue. Love this album, love this band. I intend getting all their stuff on vinyl. Or everything that's available anyway. Uh, being music on vinyl, it's in a polyline sleeve. Yeah, a few little bits of dust, but otherwise perfect. I picked up almost as soon as I went in there and this is Scott Walker looking back with Scott Walker 10 pounds this is a compilation of early Scott Walker stuff it's a bit of a cash in release I think but nice to have for the Scott Walker collection it's in a polyline sleeve inside a normal outer by the looks of it Very slight marking, but pretty much perfect. Uh, in the Funk and Soul, the Time second album, what time is it? Price at £12. Uh, so I have the Record Store Day reissue from a few years ago, but I don't have an original. So happy to have picked that up. In the high value stuff, I actually found an album I didn't even know existed. I was not aware this had a vinyl release. Um, so this is The Divine Comedy, my favourite band. This is A Secret History. This was a best of from 1999, when they left Satanta. Um, yeah, as I say, I was not aware this had a vinyl release. It's a bit crinkled. Um, surface marks to side one and two plays well with occasional surface noise is what's been written on there um, no sleeve notes or anything I don't know I presume that's genuine these look like they might be modern um, sleeves yeah definitely well played which is nice but yes, this was priced at £70. Uh, I did check it out on Discogs, and it's normally about £110. So it's you know, a good price, but sort of just um, reflects the quality. They obviously didn't like side the second album as much as the first. Which, given it's got some of my favourite Divine Comedy songs on, is sacrilege. Um... But yeah, even though this has sort of been superseded by the more recent Best Of, um, whose name has completely gone out of my head. Yep, that's gone out of my head, that'll be on the screen. Um, there's tracks on here that are not otherwise available on vinyl, he says. Um, they may be available on 7-inch single. I'm not sure whether they had 7-inch releases or not. But um, Pop Singer's Fear of the Pollen Count is uh, re-recording for this, as was Your Daddy's Car, I think. Um, so it's different from the original album version. Pop Singers was released as a single, as I say, I'm not sure if it had a 7-inch release. Gin Soaked Boy was the single from this. Um, again, I'm 
that may have had a seven inch release. I've been to a marvelous party. I don't think ever had a seven inch release. And Too Young to Die was exclusive for this, and that was never released as a single, so that's definitely the only way to get it on vinyl. So, yeah, really happy to have picked that up. And finally, a Kinks album that I didn't have. This is 1984's Word of Mouth, priced at £12. Uh, nice Arista polyline sleeve with another polyline sleeve inside. But that's pretty much perfect. Um, yeah, really nice guy running it, Ed. So as I was browsing through the high value stuff, that's what took me near to the counter. And he was playtesting a record and it started jumping around all over the place. And we sort of looked at each other and I said, oh, that's not happy. And he sort of laughed and he said, sorry, have you been in before? I said, no. He said, oh, I'd have, gi I'd have given you the tour. He said, I said, no, that's all right. I found my way around. Um, and then he asked, you know, was I local? So I explained no and what I was doing and where I'm from and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then he had a little, you know, joke about and he showed me, you know, pointed out where everything was. So I say, he said, is it, you know, I found most of it. He said, is anything particular you're looking for? I said, no, I've got very eclectic tastes, hence why I'm just going around everything. He said, that's what we like to hear. Um, so yeah, went round, picked all that stuff up, took it to the counter. As I say, he rang the singles for at 40. Then these were 12, 82, 94. 104, 129, 139, 147, 162, 172, 180, 190, 204 the LPs come to. He rung those through at 160. He was going to do them at 180, then he said, no, I'll do them at 160, then it's a nice round 200 in total. So what was that? £42 discount on those. Um... And he said, oh, do you need a bag? And I said, no, it's all right, I've, I've, I came prepared. He said, oh, sod it, he said, something for you to take home with you. And he gave me, and these were normally six pounds, a tote bag to put them in. And it's a very good quality one as well, really thick. Best one I've ever had from a record shop, quality wise. Although it's a bit, it does, obviously the records do fit. And it's a, quite a deep one, but it's pretty thin. But yeah, so yeah. Um, we had another chat um, again doing that um, and he, he said oh what was your name again so I said Martin and he held his hand out I said I'm Ed nice to meet you because I complimented the shop and everything and he asked where I was going from there on um, but yeah really good shop really nice bloke running it Ed highly recommend if you're in Cardiff paying a visit to the Cardiff Record Exchange as I said to him it won't be another 27 years before he sees me um, I'll definitely be back I'll be coming to Cardiff more regularly, I'm sure. And I will definitely pay a visit there every time. Um, from there, came home. Home. Came back to the hotel to dump that off because it was obviously quite heavy. I didn't want to be lugging it around. Then headed up to Macintosh Place to visit Divinal Records. Um, and also my old house because I used to live in Macintosh Place my third year of university. I lived at number 116. Um, so I wandered down and it hadn't changed a bit. Um, this is where I used to live. On the back to Divinal. A uh, shop that I used to pop in fairly regularly when I lived there. And it was always pretty messy then. Um, it has not improved. If anything, it's got worse. The bloke running it was very nice, you know, very chatty. And he, apart from that, I was wearing my A Prince T-shirt. Um, you could tell by what I was buying that I was a Prince fan. He said, "Oh, typical Prince fan. Anything he's, he's connected with, you buy." And I said, "Yep." Yeah. Um, so I bought these two. So this is a 12-inch single of Paisley Park. Um, I do have the 12-inch single of Paisley Park. I think I have two copies of the 12-inch single of Paisley Park. But I don't have this version where the writing isn't coloured. Normally, that's purple, I think. 
Um, I think it's the same colour as that, but some were released with it all in white. Uh, so this was... All his stuff was marked as being on sale, even stuff that was marked as new in. Um, it had a price crossed out and then a price underneath. So this was £20, but it was nine ninety nine. Um, yeah, that looks fine to me. I don't think this version had the miss... No, there was, which I have, um, some that were misprinted and had... She's always in my hair on both sides, I think it is. Um, and also, there was a little print section, which is where I got these. Um, this is Apollonia's album. So if you watched yesterday's video, I picked up a couple of Vanity albums, and I explained that after she left Vanity 6, Apollonia took over, became Apollonia 6, and Apollonia is the female lead in Purple Rain. Now, after she left Prince's employee, employee rather, um, she stayed with Warner Brothers and released this album. I don't think it's very good, but it was three ninety nine, and therefore I picked it up. Yeah, few, again, a few light marks, but nothing major. Um, yeah, the shop itself. As I say, it's a complete mess. Um, my biggest gripe with it is it's very small, but my biggest gripe with it was that he had the racks of you know records, normal you know A to Z of rock and pop, and then there was or rock rather. Then there was a little. It was marked as a dance section, but Brian Adams was in it, and all sorts of people were in it who definitely aren't dance. I think it sort of became more of a pop section and that's where the prince was but all in front of that were big crates full of records uh, there was new in ones there was beatles and beatles related ones there was 80s stuff underneath but maybe like two or three deep and you had to sort of lean over those to flick through the racks which made it very difficult to browse especially some of the sections that were quite full um so i don't think i had a proper look through so there might have been other stuff that i might have picked up um, loads of seven inch singles, fairly well organised. Uh, although he had no, he had a print section, but it was empty. Um, and at the back of the shop, there was soundtracks, which again, you could get at them, but there was too many crammed in, so you can probably browse through those. Seventies rock, sixties, um, and easy listening type stuff. Loads of CD racks all over the place, VHSs, DVDs, all sorts of stuff everywhere. It's, it could be a really good shop if it was sorted properly. I, I mean, I could see at the back of a shop, you could see through to where he stored everything. And that was just bags and bags and bags of stuff everywhere. Nightmare. I would do my head in. Um, but yeah, I paid for these. And he said, oh, I'm sure I've got some other stuff. And he sort of had a rummage below his desk and pulled out this carrier bag full of CDs that had been sort of tied together it looked like somebody had sold him basically their Little Prince CD single collection uh, went through it there was a bootleg of a Black Album there which I wasn't interested in because I've got a proper copy of a Black Album um, loads of CD singles I already have but it did have this one track promo for Cinnamon Girl which was four ninety nine, so I did take that from him. Um, yeah, it's a CDR, but being a promo, it would be. That's not, you know, that's normal. But it is does certainly look like a genuine Columbia promo. It's got all the bump and everything on it. Um, it also had a couple of. VHS tapes in here, you know, I said, no, I've got that, I've got that, I said, I've been collecting him a hell of a long time, um, but yeah, he was a very nice bloke, I just wish he'd organised his shop better, um, and then from there, I scooted round uh, to the next road along, uh, Albany Terrace, I think it is, to the record shop, which is a shop, again, that I used to frequent when I lived there, um, it wasn't a particularly good shop then and it hasn't really improved since. Lots of stock, fairly well organised. Uh, could do with a bit more grouping of, you know, particular artists and stuff like that. 
you sort of have to flick through everything. Again, he had a print section that was empty. Um, but you have sort of have to flick through, apart from a few, you know, there's a Beatles bit and a Pink Floyd. No, there wasn't even a Pink Floyd bit. Um, but, you know, there's a few sections, but most of it is just, you know, pop or r and and soul with no subdivisions so that you can sort of skip. So you have to sort of go through absolutely everything. Um, I went through most of the albums and some of the singles, the ones that looked like they might have print sections in, although then I did find a print section of the singles, which had like, no on the print section, it was just the P's. It was the 80s P's. And it was just, it had two or three prints ones that I didn't need. Um, but I did pick up one title for four ninety nine. Was it four ninety nine or five pounds? Five pounds, I think it was actually. Uh, a Joe Jackson live double album that I don't already have uh, from four different tours. So I'm happy to pick that up. Again, the nice the bloke was nice. We didn't have a proper chat. Um, yeah, it needs a bit of a clean. scratch on that side not, not a deep one we didn't have a pop chat but you know when I went up he said you know I like mush or something like that I'm not in Pompey mush is a very much a, a Pom Portsmouth expression um, and you know thanks mate I think he said when I left and you know so he was, he was pleasant enough again it's got a bit of a scratch on that side but nothing deep um, but yeah that's all I brought in there there was, according to Google, there was another record shop just down the road from that, which I headed to. But when I got there, it was all shuttered up. Um, I don't know if it was just closed or whether it's permanently closed. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, then headed back to here and dumped all that stuff off. Went and did some normal shopping, some souvenirs for some people um, and some... Tardis slippers for me. I did succumb. Um, came back and dropped that off. Just had a nice, nice-ish dinner at the Shake Shack. I wanted to try them out. It was all right. Nothing special. And then tonight I'm experiencing a 4DX film at the cinema for the first time. Um, Craig was singing the praises of them back when he was down my neck of the woods. So we just sort of hatched the plan that if there was anything on that was worth seeing, we would have gone yesterday to see one, but all that was on yesterday was Trolls, and we weren't going to see that in 4DX. We weren't going to see that in any format. But um, but then when I was looking last night, they're doing a special of the first Harry Potter film. It looks like they're going to be doing them all. Uh, but obviously I'm only here today. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to see Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in 4DX in an hour or two which I'm looking forward to I think the Quidditch bits should be very good uh, if you don't know 4DX um, your seat moves with what's on screen you get air blown at you water splashed over you at relevant times you know it's all an immersive experience um, so yeah looking forward to that but yeah that'll be it um, tomorrow it's, my train is fairly early so I won't be doing much if anything before I leave um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed these two Cardiff videos. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on another video. Thanks. Bye.